Welcome back. Now, it's not every day Hollywood comes knocking, but for one woman, that's exactly what happened. Irish author Melissa Hill has just launched her 15th book called Keep You Safe, having already had one made into a movie and one more in the offing. Yes, with the TV rights to Keep You Safe just sold, Melissa has stopped by to tell us about her most controversial book to date. Good morning to you, Melissa. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thanks for having uh, me. Most people and viewers will be familiar with your books. They're around uh, family, romance, um, friendship. Yep. Um, this one is a little bit different because it deals with, with the, the topic of vaccinations and more importantly, those who choose not to vaccinate their children. So before we get into all the glamorous TV and, and <laughs> movie stuff, tell us about the content of this particular book. Well, it, yes, the, the topic is vaccinations, but it's not this serious kind of ex exploration of the topic or any kind of, um, you know, discussion of the pros and cons. It's very much used as a dramatic vehicle. Um, in the story, we have a mother called Madeline and she is... I suppose she's sort of slightly unmumsy. She feels that um, women give themselves too much of a hard time. That we need to give ourselves a break. Mothers need to give ourselves a break. Um, if our kids are happy, we try to, you know, none of this navel gazing and, and, and overthinking things. At the end of the day, we all do our best and we all try to do our best. And we have different ways of doing that. Yes. Um, so it was more of an exploration of, I think, judgment, parent, parental judgment. And we all come across that all the time from the very big, from as soon as you become pregnant, there are certain elements of judgment. Um, so Madeline's uh, philosophies are, they're taken on board and people are saying, well, this is actually quite refreshing. You know, she's, she's been, she's quite cool about all this. It's fine. And she gets a little bit of a reputation for herself, she writes these kind of quite um, um, controversial articles about parenting. She comes on shows like this and talks mm. about it. So she's, she starts to build a little bit of a profile. But one morning, Madeline makes a very, very serious mistake. And it's, it's serious simply, it's a normal, it would be a normal enough situation for any other mother. She sends her daughter to school with a runny nose. So she has to make a call as to whether or not to leave, to have her child at home or to send her to school. She's very busy, she has to go to work. It's something she really needs to do. She sends her to school, but it's not just a runny nose, it's something a lot more serious. So there's this uh, measles outbreak in, uh, the, in the class, in the school, and because we discover then that Madeline hasn't vaccinated her children, so the finger of blame is pointed at her. So um, it becomes, oh, either the community is divided, the school is divided, parents are divided, friendships are broken, and it all ends up in a, in a court case. So as, as an author, we're always interested to how you guys come up with mm. ideas for mm. books. I think it's the most, most fascinating part of it. You look at a debate, maybe on a show like this, as you say, and you kind of go, there's a book in that. I can that's, see characters and I can see their positions and yeah, that's, the story flows. That's kind of where it came from, because I remember when my daughter was younger, um, we, we, you know, we had to decide whether or not to vaccinate her with the MMR, and there was controversy flying around, as there always are. Um, so we did the research and we decided, yes, we will vaccinate her. There was no arguing with the science as far as we were concerned. Yes. But what I found curious about the whole thing was the reaction to those who don't vaccinate. And I suppose if I had made the decision not to, would I be considered, you know, a, a tin, tinfoil hat conspiracy theorist who mm. takes all my information from the internet? That's not the case at all. You know, I'm, I'm a well-educated, kind of well-read sort of person. Um, so I thought this is, you know, th there is no middle ground with this thing. Parents are, are really, really divided. Um, and then when my daughter starts school and we started to get the notes home about, you know, chicken pox and things like that, I kind of thought to myself, wow, imagine how much more, you know, um, how something like that could really, really blow up if something went wrong and you had an unvaccinated child in the, in the school. So that's really where it came from. But from there on in, it's all drama. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's all about serious stuff going on. Of, yes. Yeah, that, that's and you've sold the TV rights to it already. Yes, which was amazing. No I know. I, I, like, it's, it's, it's been a bit of a whirlwind, the, the whole thing, really. How does that whole process work, Melissa? Well, generally speaking, um, when, I, when I read the book, my agent will send it out to, to uh, you know, various situations. It goes out to translation and could go to foreign publishers, things like that. And um, so it went TV... to 25 different languages, yes, speaking of translation, yeah, which so must be that's lovely. That's bizarre in itself. Well, what's cool about that is you can't read a word of it, but yeah. the, the covers look great and they're also different and the different, like the different covers looks for different markets, everything like that. It's, it's, it's good fun. Um, but yes, yeah, so the TV, it, it, they actually um, inquired about the rights before the book was published. So I was really, really pleased with that um, because it, it, that gives you a sense then of whether or not you're going in the right direction. Um, and I think what they're thinking is doing something along the lines of Big Little Lies, maybe a four or five part series. Right. And of course, Big Little Lies started again with a, a kind of a school gates controversy. So yes. in a way, you can see the, the yeah. sort of similarities. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's kind of gone to script now at the moment. So we're hoping that that will hit screens at some point. With these things, you never know. I have what, 
four or five under option, four, pro four or five different projects under option. One has been made, but some of them might never see the light of day. You just don't know. It's completely And when they are made, how much control do you have over your story? No. Or do you do you hand it over? I, I'm happy to hand it over. Okay. I've already moved on to another project. I've moved on to my next project. Um, with a gift to remember, it was Hallmark, Hallmark opted it. And that happened really, really quickly. So I almost didn't have time to think about it. Mm. Um, I have another book, something from Tiffany's, which is with Hollywood. And Hollywood is so mm. slow. I mean, the process is extremely slow. But Hollywood is really, I suppose it's star driven. So you need your, your lead man to basically, you know, sit by the pool and pick up the phone and say, oh, remember that, that script you sent me? Yeah, I'm ready I love to it. do it. Yeah. yeah. So we're kind of, we ha yeah, almost have to wait for all the ducks to line up with Hollywood. Um, and, we, we, you know, in general with film. But I think in TV, it's a little bit more flexible in terms of, of who you can get. And, uh, and Hallmark were extremely professional. I mean, they were brilliant. And I think they did And a you were really job. happy with what, what they did with the gift to remember? I was. I mean, you know, they have a very specific demographic. Their audience is very specific. It's quite clean and wholesome. And um, But I think that suited the story because it was quite a, a lighthearted um, story, a romantic story, which Hollywood really aren't doing those romantic comedies anymore, The Sleepers in Seattle's and the UK. Yes, so it, so it was fitting. Yeah. It was. And they're Hallmark. kind of, I suppose, they're, they're sort of mopping up that audience. They're, they're and when you see it uh, and it's finished, the finished product do you mm. say no she wasn't supposed to be like that mm. or do you know can you help yourself kind of saying those things to yourself even of course there are some lines in the in the in the movie that you know that that didn't come from me but yes. in a way they worked really well i think i think it was the perfect idea the perfect example of taking you know, um, uh, uh, a piece of work and actually elevating it. And I think they did a really, really good job. Um, so there's going to be a sequel, which is amazing. That's amazing. Mm. Like it, the phrase having a moment comes to mind, mm. Melissa, for you. And when you think of uh, well, Hollywood getting involved, you're what, 15 books in, yeah. uh, I think we said, do you right now thinking like, yeah, this that'd be a good scene. I can imagine that in a movie. Or, you know, are you still using the same process you always oh, do? Oh, I still use the same process. I mean, I always start with an idea. If an idea excites yeah. me, um, I go with it, and then characters as well, of course, are very, very important. It's that's the essential thing. That's what keeps people and reading. And that's what they're buying carrots. into as well. Yeah. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. I mean, it's, it's it's one thing to have a great idea that sounds good on paper, but ultimately, you have to be really invested in the story and in the characters and in their journey. And I think that's one thing about Keep You Safe. I'm probably more invested in this book than most because the characters are so strong for me. Mm -hmm. We'll see you in the director's chair next. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be any good at that. <laughs> it's very exciting. We wish you well. Keep Thank You Safe you. is in the shops. It is in the shops at the moment, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Brilliant stuff. Brilliant. Continued success. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Cheers. Melissa. Now, to be in with a chance to win one of five signed copies of Melissa's new book, check out our Facebook page for details. Up next, we're looking at some more pastel tones on the catwalk. See you in a few.